two days after Christmas, thousands will descend on a rural hamlet north of Brisbane for one of the world's largest folk festivals. Music industry commentators say Woodford is now regarded as the international benchmark for similar events around the world. Cathy McLeish explains. <laughs> In 1987, the first Mullaney Folk Festival made its debut, and so did first-time organiser Bill Horrocks. And it's all very relaxed and easy going, no high-pressure stuff here. The festival was a little alternative. Around 20,000 people came, and there were challenges. It was a great event, but uh, it's fair to say we didn't know what we were doing. It was probably a great event, quite by accident. What the organisers lacked in experience, they made up for in enthusiasm and energy. How's it going, Woodford? The renamed Woodford Folk Festival has grown into one of the largest folk festivals in the world. Around 120,000 festival goers take part in the six day musical and cultural event every year. This year it celebrates its 25th anniversary and it's become an institution. This is the greatest festival of its kind anywhere in Australia. It's a festival that supports more than 3,000 artists in 2,000 performances across 20 venues over the next six days. But it wasn't always that way for festivals in Australia. The festival circuit got off to a thrilling, if rocky, start in the 60s, inspired by Woodstock. When the film Woodstock went around the world, people in far-flung places, such as Terra Australis, said, we want some of that. Music historian Glenn A. Baker says Australians joined the party in the late 60s with a rimba, followed by Wallachia, Mulwalla and the Sunbury festivals in the 70s. In fact, to put on a rock festival in the, in the early 70s was a really a tempestuous undertaking. The fact that there was three Sunburys was pretty amazing. Generally, you would get one festival and then you know, litigation for, ye for years afterwards. The fact that something could last for 25 years and be warmly received and, you know, sort of revered and, you know, and people would bring their children to it and all that was not ever going to ha happen, seemingly, back then. All the wind and rain sing all for two decades, the festivals did start to die out, but the pause was temporary. And there's an incredible choice now. I mean, you know, you can go to the, you know, the Byron Bay Blues Fest or you can go to, you know, sort of, you know, a Splendour in the Grass or Day on the Green. Festivals are a huge thing in Australia at the moment. So what's, what's Iggy doing? Matt Coit is editor-in-chief of Rolling Stone magazine Australia. Festivals are now so popular that the magazine produces a dedicated edition to cater for the growing market of festival goers. Every year, um, the volume of festivals that are appearing on the calendar is increasing. It's not just music that's drawing the crowds. He says Australians have a love affair with the outdoors and festivals have become a rite of passage. A lot of the festivals selling out before the entire lineup has been announced. They've become real juggernauts and they are, uh, they're pretty much untouchable now um, just because they've got such a long lineage and there's so many people who've been to one and know exactly what they're in for. Australia may have followed America's lead in the 60s, but now our events are regarded as the international benchmark. They are the blueprint for um, successful festivals overseas. Um, I think Australia did it, did it really well uh, straight off the bat. Woodford was the first Australian festival to buy its own land and still only one of a handful in the world to have a permanent home. I think that that's given an edge that we didn't probably understand ourselves when we purchased the land in the first place. 
The Woodford Folk Festival is a not-for-profit organisation run with the help of almost 3,000 volunteers. It's taken festivals to a much larger scale. The festival itself has a daily population of around 20 to 22,000 people and the infrastructure that underpins that is larger than most country towns but the expense of that and putting that in and building that over the years has kept us very close to the bone and has caused us significant stress over the years on a financial basis. The festival itself on the other hand has continued to uh, to grow and emerge. <laughs> Woodford's audience crosses three generations and 70% are repeat visitors. There were certainly milestones uh, in our history. I remember 1999, 2000, we introduced uh, three minutes of silence at 11.30 on New Year's Eve and nobody thought it would work and then the whole audience uh, took it up. So there's milestones like that, and I think this year is probably another one of those. There's always been a sense of drama and brinkmanship about how we've uh, put it together. And while it, I suppose uh, you could say we could have done it better, uh, we're still here. We are all troublers, troublers.